Billy Waugh's journey through life is one right out of a Hollywood movie. From traveling at the age of 15 to joining the World War II fight to seeking bin Laden in the mountains of Tora Bora in his 70s, his life is filled with an adrenaline rush that is hard to match. Billy Waugh served in the Special Forces and then worked for the CIA as a paramilitary operations officer. He spent more than 50 years as a special operator in all. You don't spend 50 years performing clandestine operations without more than a few exciting tales. Today's video looks at the life of one of the most decorated and experienced soldiers ever. So stay tuned as this is sure to be a blast. Let's begin. Once a Texan Waugh was born on December 1, 1929 in Bastrop, Texas. A 15-year-old Waugh was motivated to join the Marine Corps after meeting two local Marines who had returned from combat in World War II. Knowing that he would be unlikely to be accepted in Texas due to his youth, Waugh developed a plan to travel to Los Angeles, where he believed a person could enlist at 16. Before being detained for not possessing identification and refusing to disclose his identity to a local cop, he made it all the way to Las Cruces, New Mexico. After gathering enough money for a bus ticket back to Bastrop, he was freed. Waugh decided to become a student at Bastrop High School, graduating with a 4.0 grade point average in 1947. But his heart was in the Army. He was now resolved to join the military after he finished school. He enlisted in the United States Army in 1948 and graduated from basic training in August of that year at Fort Ord, California. In December 1948, he was accepted into the United States Army Airborne School and became Airborne Certified. Waugh was posted to the 187th Airborne Regimental Combat Team RCT, in Korea in April 1951, trained to the Special Forces. Waugh encountered two U.S. Army Special Forces personnel on a train in Germany shortly after the Korean War ended. They informed him about opportunities for platoon sergeants. Shortly after, he sought a transfer. In 1954, he joined the 10th Special Forces Group SFG, in Bad Tolls, West Germany, after completing his Special Forces training and earning the Green Beret. As the United States' participation in the Vietnam War grew, Special Forces A-teams, Operational Detachment Alpha or ODA teams, were sent to Southeast Asia to support counterinsurgency operations against the Viet Cong, North Vietnamese, and other communist forces. Doomed to die? Wa's unit encountered a far bigger enemy force than expected while conducting a commando attack on a North Vietnamese army encampment near Binh Dinh province in 1965. Expecting only a few hundred soldiers, it was revealed that the NVA elite had enlisted the help of a contingent of Chinese regulars, totaling about 4,000 men. With poor communication, Billy's unit was doomed. During the attack, Billy Wa ran out of grenades and was on the verge of running out of ammo. He was struck in the knee by a Soviet-made RPK on his approach to the prearranged evac point. He got struck in the foot and ankle while crawling down a levee, making it almost impossible to move at a reasonable pace. He took an injection of morphine from his medical aid kit, but it didn't help much with the agony, and he still continued. The CIDG and SF forces were soon in jeopardy of being overwhelmed. Waugh was shot right in the forehead and was knocked out at that moment. The NVA took over the attack, and when they found Waugh's body, they assumed he was dead. Waugh described that his forehead was leaking blood from the gunshot like a faucet. So what did the good men of the NAV do? They took his belongings, including his Rolex watch and clothing, stripping him nude and abandoning him there. By a stroke of luck, his comrades tracked him down and rescued him. In 1965 and 1966, he spent much of his time recovering at Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C., before returning to service with the 5th Special Forces Group in 1966. For the fight of Bong Sun, he got a silver star and a purple heart, his sixth. Death comes knocking again. Wa was assigned to the Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studies and Observations Group during this time, Mac V. Sog. Yes, the one we talked about last time. It seems they have a thing for being outnumbered in Vietnam. Wa helped train Vietnamese and Cambodian soldiers in unconventional warfare techniques, mainly against the North Vietnamese Army, operating along the Ho Chi Minh Trail while working for SOG. This is the same MACV SOG with a casualty rate of 100%. Wa was a senior non-commissioned officer of MACV Command SOG and Control North, headquartered at Marble Mountain on the South China Sea beach a few miles south of Da Nang, Vietnam before retiring from the U.S. Army Special Forces. During the clandestine unit's transformation and name change to Task Force 1 advisory element, Wa served as Command Sergeant Major, TF-1AE. Wa made the first combat halo jump, a parachuting maneuver designed for quick, covert entry into enemy terrain. 
His squad conducted a mock combat infiltration into the NVA-controlled War Zone D in South Vietnam in October 1970 for reassembly training and other purposes. On June 22, 1971, he led the last combat special reconnaissance parachute insertion by U.S. Army Special Forces Halo parachutists into denied territory controlled by Communist North Vietnamese Army forces. Postman Billy by day, CIA official by night. Law returned to Texas to work for the United States Postal Service. A postman's profession, however, was not for someone who was used to the adrenaline rush of fighting with SOG. In 1977, though, he would concentrate on his career. He was hired, along with three other ex-Special Forces personnel, to teach Libyan Special Forces forces. The men thought it was a CIA operation at first, but as they discovered more, they realized it wasn't. Instead, it was a clandestine operation led by Edwin Wilson, a former CIA agent. Wilson was sentenced to 53 years in jail after being convicted of attempted murder and unlawfully supplying guns, explosives, and ammunition to a foreign government. Waugh, on the other hand, was approached by an active CIA agent shortly before deployment, who instructed him to photograph people, sites, and anything else of use. This was a necessary precaution for Waugh in case something went wrong. He photographed the guys with whom he was training, as well as surface-to-air missile positions. After that, he handed them over to the CIA. With the U.S. Embassy in Tehran stormed in 1979, Waugh was in Libya. He had to flee Libya since it was no longer safe for him, so he went to Frankfurt, Germany. Outwardly, the new CIA directors during the Carter administration didn't want someone like Waugh in the fold any longer. As a result, Waugh accepted a position as deputy head of police in the Marshall Islands U.S. Army Kwajalein missile range. The goal assigned to the team was to prevent the Soviets from collecting confidential knowledge about U.S. missile technology a trip to hunt the deadliest game. The agency, however, contacted him again in the late 1980s. As a result, Billy Waugh found himself in Khartoum, Sudan, on the search for an unknown terrorist and terror group. Osama bin Laden was the man, and Al-Qaeda was the organization. Bin Laden was not a key target at the time, so Waugh was directed to keep an eye on him and report on his activities. Several times he came within a few feet of him. During an interview with Air Force writer Nick Stubbs in 2011, Waugh stated, I was within 30 meters of him. With a rock, I could have murdered him. In 1993, Waugh and several CIA officers launched a surveillance mission to track down Illich Ramirez Sanchez, dubbed Carlos the Jackal, a wanted terrorist. For 10 years, no one had taken an image of the Jackal. Waugh's crew, on the other hand, found him and set up a surveillance station across the street from his home. They kept an eye on Carlos's routine, and when the French arrived, they invaded the residence and apprehended the Jackal. Waugh had one more battle left in him. With his extensive knowledge of bin Laden, he persuaded the CIA to send him to the Afghan highlands. Waugh was assigned to the 5th SFG's ODA-594. The men searched the Afghan highlands outside of Tora Bora for the infamous terrorist. Waugh was on the prowl one last time at the age of 71, when all ambitions of being an operator for warriors had long passed. In an interview with Stubbs, Waugh remarked, If the intellect is good and the body is capable, you keep going if you love it. Once you get used to it, you're not going to want to stop. What makes you think you'd want to do anything else? No one besides Waugh knows how many secret missions he took part in due to security concerns. Billy Waugh is a legend in the special operations and paramilitary communities, and for a good reason. We hope you enjoyed our video on Billy Waugh. Who doesn't like a story where the outnumbered underdogs survive? If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to like and subscribe as more exciting videos are on the way.